All right, you guys, in this lesson, we're going to be taking a look at a very interesting medication in the world of medicine and specifically in critical care. It's something that plays a vital role in some emergency situations, and it's our first line medication in the treatment of unstable tachycardia that comes from the recommendations from the American Heart Association for ACLS. And this heart stopping medication is adenosine. Now, adenosine is a very interesting medication on a lot of different levels, from its diverse forms that we find in our biology to the various effects and potential uses for uh, diagnostics and therapeutically treating our patients. And so to start this off, I want to actually talk about what is adenosine. Now, this is a naturally occurring organic compound. It's something that we call a purine nu nucleoside. And so if you think taking us back to our days of school, if you remember our structure of DNA, we had those different nitrogen bases that we're all familiar with. And if you remember, we had one called adenine. Well, if you take that adenine and you add a ribose molecule to it, then you have adenosine. And it's this nucleoside of adenosine that is then used to form a nucleotide that we find in our DNA and RNA molecules. Now, also Thinking back to school, you probably know the name adenosine triphosphate. Yep, that's the ATP that our cells need to carry out life. Now it's this nucleoside adenosine that forms the adenosine triphosphate. And in fact, it's the same adenosine that makes up our monophosphate and our diphosphate versions as well that our body also uses. And then in addition to that, we have cyclic AMP, which is essentially adenosine monophosphate, again coming from the same adenosine. And on top of these here, there are many other different forms and uses really throughout our body. Now, as for the medication as we know it, it is classified as a class 5 or a miscellaneous antiarrhythmic. So let's actually talk real quick about how it is that it works. So throughout our body, we really have a multitude of these things called purinergic adenosine receptors and these receptors have effects on many different systems in our body from the immune, cardiovascular, neurologic, respiratory, and even urinary systems. Now, while I'm not going to cover the impact of all these different receptors and all these different systems, the two main ones, though, that I do want to talk about are found in the cardiac AV nodal tissue, and this is our A1 adenosine receptor and then also in our endothelial tissue, and this is going to be our A2B receptor. Now, in the cardiac AV nodal tissue, by activating this A1 receptor, it's actually going to slow the transmission of impulses, and it does this by forcing potassium out of the cells and really inhibiting the associated calcium influx. What this means is it's going to cause a transient heart block at the AV node. Now, in the endothelial tissue, specifically of arteries, by activating the A2B receptors that the adenosine is actually going to cause relaxation of that smooth muscle in the artery, and this is going to lead to vasodilation. Now, one other really important thing to know about adenosine here is that it has an extremely short half-life. It's only about 10 seconds. So let's talk real quick about potential side effects that your patient could experience with this medication. They could experience things like shortness of breath, chest pain or pressure, nausea, vomiting, uh, headache, flushing, sweating, lightheadedness, dizziness, numbness, blurred vision, palpitations, arrhythmias and blocks, and hypotension. Now it is important to know about some contraindications, and this is going to be with patients who already have a second or third degree heart block or sick sinus syndrome. Now, other receptors that the adenosine impacts can also lead to bronchoconstriction, so we do want to use this cautiously in those patients that have obstructive lung disease. It can also increase the risk for seizures, and it should not be used in patients who are having signs and symptoms of an acute MI. On top of that, we want to be careful using this in patients who just are not going to be able to tolerate the hypotension that could potentially be associated with it. All right, so let's actually talk about some of our uses in critical care. And the first one of these is going to be in our treatment of supraventricular tachycardia, or SVT. 
Now, because of its ability to cause that transient heart block, we can actually use the adenosine to try and slow down a fast heart rate and possibly even convert it to a normal one. So we can potentially convert reentrant arrhythmias, things such as our AV reentrant tachycardia, the AVRT, or AV nodal reentrant tachycardia, or the AVNRT, but it can also help to identify the underlying rhythm when the heart rate is typically above 150 and it's really too fast to identify what that rhythm is. Now it is also recommended as an option to treat the monomorphic wide complex tachycardia per our ACLS algorithm as well. Now, one really important thing to know when using this medication though is that it can cause a few seconds of ventricular asystole. Now, this is obviously not only nerve wracking for us to see up on the monitor, but if your patient is actually awake, then it can feel quite weird and uncomfortable for them. So be aware of that. Now, our initial dose for treating SVT here is gonna be six milligrams and we're gonna do this rapid IV push. So because of that extremely short half-life that I was talking about, uh, this is oftentimes where I make the recommendation to use a three-way stopcock. And the point of this is we wanna have both the syringe with adenosine and a syringe with a 10 ml flush attached to it. This way we can push the adenosine really fast and then immediately follow it up with that 10 ml flush to ensure that we give all the medication into the patient as quickly as possible. Now, if we've given them the six milligram dose and it doesn't convert them or it just wasn't effective, we can follow that up with an additional dose of 12 milligrams, again, IV push, and we can repeat that 12 milligram dose one more time. Important though, never give a dose that's larger than 12 milligrams. Now, the other use for adenosine that I do want to talk about here, while not necessarily a critical care use here, this is something that's done often in the hospital. I know you guys have probably had patients that have had this done, and so I thought it would be good to do a quick review here. So the use of adenosine, or its analog regadenosine, something we also know as Lexascan, can be used diagnostically in cardiac stress test when exercise is not an option for our patient. We can also add a radiographic tag and we can use this then in a nuclear stress test. Now, Lexiscan is more specific to the receptors that we want to target and it also has a longer half-life. So I think this one's a little bit more popular to use than adenosine, but adenosine definitely can and is used sometimes. And so what's happening here is because of that endothelial mediated vasodilation, we can actually dilate the coronary blood vessels. And so this can help to identify areas of blockage in patients. And it can also lead to ischemia post blockage. It's something that we call cardiac steel in this case, uh, which can also then elicit chest pain and also be diagnostic of uh, blockage and ischemia for a patient. Now the dose here is definitely different than when we're giving it for SVT. Uh, the dose here is 140 micrograms per kilogram per minute, and we infuse this over six minutes for the patient. All right, and that was our review of adenosine. Uh, I really hope you guys enjoyed this lesson. If you did, please leave me a like down below. It really goes a long way to help promote this video in the eyes of the YouTube algorithm, uh, as well as leave me a comment down below. I love to read your comments. And I try to respond to just about every one of you guys. Uh, if you haven't already and you want more critical care content like this video here, make sure and subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification when you do, uh, as well as share this video with other people that you think might find it useful. And a special shout out for the YouTube and Patreon members out there and the additional support that you guys are showing for this channel. Make sure you guys stay tuned for the next lesson in this series. Otherwise, check out a couple awesome lessons I'm going to link to right here for you. As always, thanks for watching. Have a great day.